What is happening y'all? Cowboy here and I'm excited to bring you my final build for Dream of the Demon, a Benzai 10 build, the Versatile Tactician. Now not only is this build capable of tripling the damage of Inari builds, it can also be run with any weapon you want. Yes, you heard that correctly. Whether you were playing Katana or Dual Swords or Split Staff or Dachi or Tanfa, it doesn't matter. You can run this build and absolutely decimate content in Dream of the Demon. Now, this is all assuming, of course, that you were able to take advantage of the six piece set bonus versatility. Now, the way versatility works is every time you hit an enemy with a new active skill, you're going to gain a stack up to a total of nine. These stacks last for 45 seconds each, and every time you do a new active skill, the timer is going to be refreshed for another 45 seconds. The numbers you're seeing on screen right now were me doing light attacks in high stance with this build against the Yoki and the Dojo. At no stacks, I was hitting for 841, and at nine stacks, I was hitting for 1304, a 55% damage increase. Now with split staff, it's about 55%, but the numbers the community has run has come back ranging from 50% up to 60%, depending on the weapon. So it's gonna come down to how skilled you are with that weapon and how good you are at rotating your stances. Now in particular, when I'm talking about using skills, I'm talking about everything you see in this list that has the potential to do damage. So for example, if I start battle off with a roar power and then go into a quick side splitter, ebb and flow, fill the void, then go into a serpent sweep, and then lastly wrap things up with a radiant moon. Just doing that, I'm already at six stacks. So that's not even including going into mid stance or high stance. And obviously this is going to depend largely on the weapon. Some weapons, it's gonna be very easy to rotate through all this stuff. Stuff like Tomfas or Switchglaive or Split Staff are going to be phenomenal with this. Something like Axe, where you're a little bit slower on your abilities, it's gonna be a little bit harder. Additionally, you need to use different abilities. If you're using Sign of the Cross, Sign of the Cross in high stance and Sign of the Cross in mid stance only count as one. So you wanna have different abilities in every slot. In a sense, this is like the complete opposite of a singularity build. So if you're the type of player that just wants to do Mad Spinner or EI Quick Draw or Sign of the Cross, this is not the build for you. But if you're the type of player that wants to use the full kit your weapon has available and rotate through everything, not only is this an incredibly fun build to play because you're using all the tools you have available to you, but it also offers the highest damage potential in the game of all the current grace sets. Now, not only does this build focus on Benzai 10's grace, we're also working in Tactician's Ingenuity. Now, the reason for that is gonna be the five piece set bonus here, melee key damage. We're gonna be combining that with Yumehami for another 20% melee key damage. And then when you consider the melee key damage that we have on our weapon, we are at comfortably 50% bonus melee key damage. Now, the reason we want this is as we move into higher difficulties, things like Dream of the Demon, Dream of the Wise, Dream of the Neo, enemies are incredibly dangerous. In fact, one mistake, you'll get one or two shot, like you just started playing the game and you're in basic scrub gear again. So because of that, being able to do enough key damage allows us to stun lock enemies to the point where they can't fight back. And because they can't fight back, our survivability increases. Now, if you want more damage, you can work in more damage. Keep in mind, this is a five piece set bonus here and grace pieces can be rolled on any piece of gear. So because of that, if there's a different five piece set bonus you want, you're more than welcome to go for it. You could work in Kingos for a lot more damage, but you have to chase the back. You could work in Red Demon for more damage, as long as the enemy is scorched. You could work in Warrior of the West, more damage as long as the enemy is electrified. But in general, one thing I wanna stress here is you want things that have percent based bonuses. Something like the 6% melee key damage, that 6% melee key damage at this point in the game is already going to outclass the constitution a bonus we would see from something like warrior of the east uh, because our damage numbers are going higher and higher and higher as our weapon levels go up percent base bonuses are going to be more valuable than flat attack increases now as for our weapon stats in particular obviously you can run whatever weapon you want here but i would highly suggest you use a purity weapon and the reason for this is once again, going higher into the difficulties, what I want you to take note of here under Purified is that any enhanced statuses are removed. And what this means is that as we go up against these stronger enemies, these cursed enemies that are stacked with buffs and whatnot, having access to Purity is going to allow us to debuff them and turn them back into the basic Betty they were 
on lower difficulties. So because of that, purity is going to be an ideal choice moving into higher difficulties, on top of the fact that it obviously synergizes with our ability to decimate key, which we get from tacticians as well as Yumehami. Now, moving on in to the weapon itself, uh, beyond that, obviously load out your weapon with whatever you want. I'd suggest melee attack key consumption, melee key damage, active skill break, life drain, and then an attack bonus of your choice. Obviously have it scaling with your weapon. Now, a lot of folks asked about this on the last video. So quickly, just to cover yes, dual sir. remodeling, the way remodeling is going to work to get two different stats remodeled on a weapon is you go to the weapon you want. Now, this has D strength, B plus courage, and C plus, or excuse me, B plus magic, C plus courage. What I want to do is hit triangle. It's going to make a check mark and select courage. Now I go over to magic and you can see now I have the A minus A minus and then I hit X to confirm and that will give me specialization two and three giving me the dual remodel which will put me higher compared to just any one of them. Moving back on over into the set though, let's talk about the other gear. Now, as for your Heshikiri Hasabe, I wouldn't suggest decking that out. This is just here to fill out the five piece set bonus. But once I said again, you can use any set bonus you want. So if you want to run something like say a spear Odachi build, you could run the red demon set with this and put the spear here and then use your Odachi here. There's a lot of flexibility with this build. Um, as for your two ranged weapons, they're once again gonna be dealer's choice here. I chose a bow and a cannon just to give something that was heavy hitting and something that was a little bit faster, but you're gonna want to roll Benzai Ten's Grace on both of these. Now, speaking of rolling graces, let's talk about that and in particular safe scumming and how that's going to work. Now, graces can be done on Way of the Demon. The basic idea is you need to take a piece that is not already part of a set. This is Dragon's Ambition, this is Righteous Strategist. These cannot be graces. Going to this though, which doesn't have a set bonus, we just forge it, make it divine, hit yes, and we have a grace, Hachiman's grace. But let's say you didn't want Hachiman's grace, there's a different grace you want. This is where safe scumming comes in. So for those that don't know how safe scumming works already, essentially from the menu here, hit start, go to upload, download, save data. Before you start doing all of your forging, you're gonna wanna upload your data to the cloud or to a USB if you wanna do that. You're going to start forging, if you don't get the grace you want in say five or 10 rolls, re-download your save and try again. And this is gonna be especially important to trying to get these sets min-max, kind of how I have here, because you might end up forging 10, 15, 20 different helms to get the helm with the specific grace that you want. Not only that, but working with the offset bonuses, we can get things that are star effects, such as this active skill damage 7.8% that I have on all of the strategist gear. And I got that by just forging and forging and forging. And if it wasn't active skill damage, reload the save and go in again. Now talking about the gear stats in particular, for our helm here, we're gonna be running the Chinese crown helmet. Now what's great about this with this build is this buff right here. Once we win the enemy, which is essentially putting them into a state where we can get a free grapple off, it's going to give us a defense buff. Think of this like a slightly weaker version of Steel Talisman. It's roughly 20 to 25% damage reduction. Uh, so a very, very solid defense buff coming in there, especially because we're going to be winning enemies constantly. Uh, beyond that, Elixir Efficacy to improve how much our healing is. Key bonus is going to be great here. We obviously want attack on every piece of gear. Now, for the grace pieces, I have Unruly Revolution just to help buff the damage of that. Ideally, I would prefer to have active skill damage on every single piece, but obviously save scumming to get not only active skill damage star, but also the specific grace you want is battling like super RNG. It's like trying to roll 200 sided dice at the same time and hoping that you get double one on both dice or something. So is it possible? Yes. Are your chances high? Hell no but getting star effects on specific set gear is a lot easier. So if you want to, to get active skill damage or active skill key damage or elemental damage or whatever the case is, rolling that on your offset pieces is going to be much easier since you're just crafting that one piece and you're not trying to chase a grace around. So on really revolution on our off pieces with the split staff just to boost the damage there, active skill damage on anything else. 
Obviously, you're not going to want a really revolution if you're running a different weapon. But I would suggest doing is just putting that towards the ability that that you want to boost up the most, the ability that you would use to get your eighth or ninth stack of versatility. Uh, beyond that, with my specific setup, I'm going for a lot of untouched Omeo because the split staff has 99 magic, so we're using a lot of Omeo. But just stats in general are going to be things like life recovery on Amrita Absorption. Uh, life in general is nice. I'd suggest elemental damage taking Garden on three pieces just to give you 100% elemental damage when you block. Um, active skill damage is great. Uh, active skill key damage is going to be great. Pure melee damage is a decent choice. If you're using elemental damage, keep in mind you have to be buffed, whether it's going to be with an Oni B or a Talisman at all times, otherwise that bonus will not help you. Moving down from there though, uh, Yasukani, Wise General's Pillbox. Ideally, I prefer a green Magatama here, but I don't have one yet, so we're working with the Pillbox. And you'll also notice I have star effects on these. The way to get the star effects on these is you need to go to a large Sudama in a Dark Realm, uh, for example, the one that is down in Viper Sanctum. You would go to him and you would drop your accessory. So I would go to the address at the shrine and then I drop my Yasukani and I drop a gourd. He's going to pick up both of those. He's going to take the gourd as payment and he's going to re-roll the Yasukani. If I don't get what I wanted from him, I'm going to go to quit, return to title screen, and it's going to put me right back at that shrine where I can drop my Yasukani again. Now, obviously, this is going to take a lot of time, but... If you put the time in, you get things like this, an extra 19% melee key damage or melee damage versus zero key enemies, which as you can imagine, with me doing all the melee key damage I'm doing, this bonus is up quite a bit. So as soon as a yokai or a human hits that zero key threshold, we are going to obliterate them. Uh, beyond that, other things that are nice, obviously life recovery and red absorption on both is an excellent choice. Uh, I went defense bonuses here on magic and courage because it synergizes with split staff and untouched omeo along with elixir boosting. Uh, as for your scrolls, go for whatever you can find that's good. This is just a decent one. As for our item loadout here, the biggest thing I would suggest going into Dream of the Demon is going to be barrier and protection. If you're doing a high magic build, you'll have plenty to have both of these on. Uh, I also have some Arch Yokai on, but obviously this is going to vary depending on your build. Beyond that, we're also working with Soul Purge. Now, the way Soul Purge works is when we use this, our weapon is going to bottom out on, on familiarity, but this is going to buff our attack power by roughly 55%, which is a massive increase. So just for perspective, if we go back to the damage numbers from before, I was hitting 1304 with nine stacks of versatility and 3667 with versatility, confusion, and new pepo up. I could add soul purge on top of that and it would ramp that up into 4700 ish range um, basically just buff stacking you can easily get over 5000 damage on a basic hit with this build because nothing in this build conflicts soul purge doesn't conflict new pepo doesn't conflict confusion doesn't conflict versatility doesn't conflict and that's what makes this such an incredible build is you're able to take full advantage of all these attack buffs still in a time where we got hit with a patch and a bunch of stuff suddenly conflicts uh, beyond that, you know, quick change tiger running as always, just good to have. And then Clay Bell of Beckoning because this guy does lots of key damage, so he's nice to have around. Uh, as for Yumahami, the main reason we are running him is the 20% melee key damage bonus. Just a really, really nice thing to have. Uh, on top of that, some faster key recovery on Amrita Absorption, which is kind of nice. That's going to give us a, a buff similar to Barrier. So if Barrier falls off as long as you're getting key damage, you're going to have that faster key recovery. In fact, if you're not a fan of Barrier, you could run Extraction Talisman instead, and that will allow you to... Uh, ramp in the key recovery as well as all the life absorbed so a very solid choice there but i'm a really big fan of barrier automatically dispelling yokai pools just kind of suits a lazy style of play um, as for our soul course namahage here is a great choice for more melee damage versus zero key enemy this guy will chew through the key of humans almost instantly he'll do massive chunks of key damage to yokai opponents Kasha, a standard choice I'm a big fan of due to the life drain on Yokai ability hit, as well as the faster movement on Amrita Absorption. And then lastly, our fleshy god, New Pepo, for more life recovery Amrita Absorption, along with the obviously OP Berserk buff, giving us a 50% damage increase. Now, as for stats with a build like this, obviously, you're going to want to do 99 in your two primary stats. So if you're doing dual swords, it's skill and heart. 
if you're doing switch split staff it's going to be courage and magic um, beyond that you want enough stats and strength and skill to meet stat requirements you're going to want to put enough into stamina to make sure you're at B agility with this particular gear setup we're at B agility no matter what and that's with all of our gear reinforced you can see we're we're comfortable right now if i had add even a little bit into stamina um you know i, I can stay at B agility with no issue uh, but the biggest things here are you want to get B agility and you want to have a toughness beyond that as you continue to level up towards 400 i'd suggest splitting between constitution and heart uh, just get both of those up to 99 ideally at end game what i would suggest is having constitution and heart as close to 99 as possible your priority is to have your two primary stats max at 99 and beyond that once again be agility making sure you have enough stamina to hit that threshold so that's basically going to cover it for this build um, obviously what specific things you put on skills is largely going to be dependent on your build itself uh, obviously i'm working with a lot of arcaners here just to to make it even easier to proc things like confusion but that's going to vary per weapon so either way let's jump on in and show you some boss slaughter this is a demon scroll that i've been trying to fill on out One, two, three, four, five, up to seven. Here's a fight on Child's Prodigy Invitation, the online mission. Next up, we got point of no return. And keep in mind, for a lot of these two, this build is, is very much oriented towards uh, fighting enemies in like prolonged encounters, not really one-on-ones. And then on top of that, we're not even doing, uh, you know, we're not even buff stacking here. I'm basically using you Peppo and that's it. We're not even playing around with confusion, really. I mean, if it goes up, it goes up, but we're not trying to focus on it right now. We're not trying to use our soul purge at all. This is just what the build can do, just as like a base, just, just, just versatility. And now we'll go ham. So close to just bottoming out his key before you could do anything. <laughs> Lastly, we'll do Refined Man of the Underworld, showing how this works with getting the buff and keeping it rolling as you progress.
So as you can see, just being careful with the buffs, went into the, the boss fight there, probably about six stacks, and then just timed it so that my ninth stack came up as the final boss started. No issues at all. Absolutely obliterate everything. I mean, honestly, out of everything I've made, I think this may be my favorite build just because to maximize your damage, you really have to go through all of your skills and kind of play your weapon to its full potential, which makes it a ton of fun and overall improves the experience, in my opinion. So either way, thanks for coming on by. I hope y'all enjoyed the build. And I will catch you next time with more Neo 2.